With Senator Kirsten Gillibrand having announced her presidential run last night, Julian Castro announcing over the weekend, and Senator Amy Klobuchar openly pondering a bid, the dams are definitely breaking open and everyone and their mother is set to announce on the Democratic side. But no candidate has sparked more online debate, whatever that's worth, than Representative Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii, who announced on Van Jones's show that she would be running for president. To most progressives, she's primarily known as the former vice chair of the DNC who resigned over their outrageous treatment of Bernie Sanders and to endorse him. However, there is, of course, a lot more to her than that. She's a veteran who served in the United States Army during the Iraq War and was elected to represent Hawaii's second congressional district in 2012 at a very young age after Maisie Hirano ran for Senate. She's the first Samoan American and Hindu American to serve in Congress. She is for legalizing marijuana, has voted to raise the minimum wage, and has pushed forward an election integrity bill that would move us to paper ballots. But the policy issue she's probably received the most attention for is being one of the few non-neocons in government, at least on the surface. She's been vocal about ending the wars, stopping regime change, which is a hugely important and underrepresented issue for the left. She reaffirmed this stance in an interview with an Indian TV station. The United States, I believe, should not be policing the world. Uh, it's not effective. Uh, we have limited resources, and it's not, it's not the right place. Mm. Uh, there is so much that we can do. Uh, we should find partners who we can work with, and again, remain very focused on that mission. Who is threatening? Who, who is providing this great threat to the world today? Fantastic answer, and that aligns with her views on Syrian intervention. However, in the same interview, she said this. Let me ask you in the end, as a soldier, how do you respond to the much discussed uh, report on the CIA's use of torture uh, and, and, and what, what some Americans have called a blot on American values? Very bluntly, I'm conflicted. I'm conflicted on this report. There are uh, I think the jury is still out on the report itself. Uh, there have been comments that there are things missing or it was incomplete, and there, there are differing opinions on the report itself. Let's say in an hour, mm. a nuclear bomb or an attack mm. will go off unless this information is found. Uh, I believe that if I were the president of the United States, that I would do everything in my power to keep the American people safe. Mm. Uh, so this is, this is an area that uh, I have conflicting feelings on. Although, of course, there are questions about whether torture actually leads to uh, the correct intel, right? Yeah. That debate carries on. Yeah, that debate carries on. Well, respectfully, Tulsi Gabbard, this isn't an episode of 24. It's international law and human rights, and that is the exact right-wing scenario that was used to justify torture under the Bush administration. So that is an incredibly concerning answer, and then you read even more. Gabbard has voted to make it harder for refugees from Iraq and Syria to enter the U.S. and courted Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, despite his links to anti-Muslim violence that killed hundreds. And to make matters worse, she's received political donations from far-right groups supportive of the extremist Modi. What is the cause of terrorism, according to Gabbard? Islam, of course. Before she became a progressive darling for endorsing Sanders, Gabbard became a conservative darling for relentlessly hawking the idea, later popularized by Trump, that Obama's foreign policy was failing because he refused to use the term Islamic extremism or some variation of it. In short, Islamophobia and foreign policy is a real concern for Tulsi Gabbard and her candidacy. She had a terrible record on LGBT issues before coming to Congress as well, which doesn't help the perception that she holds bigoted views. But fortunately, her voting record has been very pro-LGBT since she said those awful things as a very young woman. These major red flags don't take away from the fact that Gabbard has a strong record in many areas, like supporting the reinstatement of Glass-Steagall and the fact that she personally protested Dapple. But she has a lot of questions to answer, and we shouldn't put our heads in the sand and ignore that fact based on her courageous act in 2016.